Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I got a new single board computer to show you guys. This is a very small single board computer. It's the Orange Pi 1. We're going to unbox it, go over the specs, then we're going to move over and run something called Retro Orange Pi. It's pretty much Retro Pi for the Orange Pi. They make several builds for all the Orange Pi boards. All right, so the heart of this board is an all-winner H3 1.2 gigahertz quad-core CPU. This has 512 megabytes of RAM. The GPU is a Mali MP2 clocked at 600 megahertz. So I'm not sure how well it's gonna do with N64, Dreamcast, but all the old school stuff, it should run just fine. This is one of their cheaper boards here. We only have one USB port, ethernet, 512 megabytes of RAM. Now that's shared with the GPU also. 40 GPIO header pins, SD card slot, HDMI, power in, reset button, and OTG port. So this thing is actually really small. Let me grab a Raspberry Pi and I'll compare it for you. So as you can see, it's a lot smaller than the Raspberry Pi boards. We do have a quad core H3 CPU, 512 megs of RAM, I want to see how this thing performs. Now we're going to be installing Retro Orange Pi, which is pretty much a port of Retro Pi to the Orange Pi boards. In the background, it also runs ArmBN, which is an awesome feature because we can just exit right out of the Retro Pi or the Emulation Station menu and go directly to a desktop and relaunch Retro Pi from there. No trouble at all. Now I would go over the board a little bit more, compare it with some other ones. I will make another video this week. I just wanted to get this out of the way really quick. Kind of running low on time, so let's get this thing booted up. All right, guys, so setup was a breeze, just like installing RetroPie. It's a little different loading the ROMs, but in my opinion, it's a lot easier. We even have the RetroPie logo on the main menu here. I only loaded up some PlayStation 1, some Neo Geo, N64, and Super Nintendo games right now because this is going to be a quick video I just wanted to introduce you to this board before we get into it a little more I have no cooling on the board right now. We're gonna see how it performs directly out of the box Now one of the cool features I did find out was if I press start here and go to apps I can launch the desktop directly from here and then transfer all of my ROMs using a USB stick very easy to do. It runs ArmBN, which is a very nice operating system for these little single board computers. But right now, I just want to get into some gameplay. First thing I wanted to test off the bat was N64. This is a low-powered board. I'm not sure how it compares with the Raspberry Pi 3 just yet. It does have a Mali MP2 GPU clocked at 600 megahertz. Let's get in here and see what it does. First up, GoldenEye 007. So we have all the same settings as RetroPie. We're gonna start out with the Gloopin 64 core. And let me see the resolution, render res, yep. If I go any lower right now, my game capture will not pick this up. So that's a shame. Let's. Just launch it like it is. I'm using a Razer Serval Bluetooth controller, but it's connected using USB. So this is the Gloopin Core, and I'm not a big fan of it, but we'll see how it performs with this little board. So one of the reasons I don't like the Gloopin Core is all the graphical glitches you get. See the mountains in the back there? but. It's really slow. I can tell you that right now. So I might just get into some settings and do a full video on N64. I believe this little board does have the potential to run N64 at a decent frame rate with a lot of games. It's not acting that bad right now, but it's not fully playable either. I'm just messing around now trying to get a feel for it yeah I thought he was gonna die 
And when we get up here, it's going to lag out bad. This is where it always lags out on these little single board computers. Yep. So what I'm going to do is skip N64 for right now. This is straight out of the box. No settings have been changed. And I'm actually just putting my hand on the CPU right now. It doesn't feel that hot, so I don't think cooling's going to help it much. It's going to be in the resolution and the core we're using. Start and select. Should exit me. Yep. Okay, so N64... We're going to save that for this weekend. I'll do a full video on that. Just test out Neo Geo while we're here. I want to do... We'll just do Metal Slug 5. It's using the LRFB Alpha Core. And great. Load it up for us. I'm pretty sure it's going to run Neo Geo pretty well. Oh, yeah. Handling Metal Slug 5, very good. I don't notice any lag at all. Now, this game works really well on the Raspberry Pi 2 also, so I'm not that surprised. There we go. It's back out of here. So I got a really good feeling that NES... SNES, stuff like that's going to run very well. Mega Drive, Master System, not sure about Dreamcast, but I want to test out PlayStation 1 games. I put a few on here. First one I'm going to test is Street Fighter Alpha 3. It's using the PCSX rearmed core. And I know this is a 2D game. I purposely chose this game to start with. So I do notice some screen tearing. Probably want to look into some V-Sync options if there are any built into this. Other than that, it looks pretty good. So this Razer controller is great, but right now I'm using the D-pad, and it has separated D-pad buttons, so it's really hard to pull anything off. Runs good. Now we're going to try Crash Bandicoot. I'm using these games here because the intro isn't so drawn out. Like I said, a little low on time here. I wanted to get this video out, though. This little board is pretty cool. I love the size of it. Installation was very easy. And before we get out of here, I want to show you the desktop that's built in. All right, so Crash Bandicoot is a very well-optimized game for the PlayStation 1 off the bat. So I actually expected it to run well if I was able to launch it at all. And... By the looks of it, we're running at full speed. No trouble going on here, except for this controller. I will hook up my Xbox controller next time. It's just this D-pad is killing me. So 
So it's looking great. You can also probably go up with the resolution on this PlayStation 1 emulator. It's running very smooth here. I got this one on... I'll leave a link in the description. I can't remember if it was Banggood or Gearbest. But you can find them all over. Possibly even on eBay. Uh, somebody might have a few listed in the States, if you're in the States. It's definitely a cool little board. I'm just feeling the CPU now, and it's not overly hot. Okay, so real quick, I want to show you this. We'll go to Apps, Desktop. Yes. So here's our desktop. This is Armbian. If you want to load up your games, you can load them on a USB stick or an external hard drive. Plug it into the Orange Pi. Open up your RetroPie folder, load your ROMs in the corresponding ROM folder, and your BIOSes go in your BIOS folder. It is running Kodi, Krypton, and it actually works fairly well on this little quad-core chip. Before I get out of here, I just want to let you know this is a cool little board. I'm going to be doing more videos on this. I don't have time to do a full review right now. Possibly Monday I'll be able to mess with it a lot this weekend, make a few videos, do a little review for you guys. But right now, I want to move over and I want to show you something that's recently popped up. It's actually been around for a little while. You might have seen it on your Facebook or Instagram or something like that. It was launched on Indiegogo and it's called the Retro Engine Sigma. Let's move over and I just want to show you a little bit about this unit here and why you shouldn't buy it and go with an Orange Pie instead. All right, so I'm going to leave links to the Orange Pie website down below, and I'll also leave links to Banggood. This is where I got mine. This is the Orange Pie 1H3. $15.56 right now. Mine was actually cheaper. It was on a little more of a sale, but even for $15, bucks, you can not beat it. Now, there's another one I also ordered, and the only reason I ordered it was I had a little bit of credit to Banggood, and it has an extra USB port plus Wi-Fi built in. This is the Orange Pie Lite. Same board as the one you just saw in the video. It's going to perform exactly the same, except it has an extra USB and Wi-Fi. This is $15.31. I'm just going to head over here to the Orange Pie website. This is the Orange Pie 1 you just saw in the video. A7 quad core, 1.2 gigahertz. It actually has 512 megs of RAM, the one I have, and it's shared with the GPU. So it does show up as about 300 megs in the operating system. Cool little board for the price. And then we have the Orange Pie Lite. Same thing, extra port, Wi-Fi built in. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this on your Facebook or Twitter or whatever. This is the Retro Engine Sigma, okay? 79 bucks. Um, here's the deal. Comes with a cool little case. That's nice, you know. 32 gigabyte SD card pre-installed with... It's the same exact operating system. If you look at these pictures here as Retro Orange Pi, the operating system I just showed you in the video. It's a free operating system. You can download it, put it on your SD card, and boot it up. Dual stick analog controller. Now this is going to be a cheap, wired, knockoff PS3 controller that you can get on eBay for like six bucks. No name 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Another six to eight dollars, I guess. USB micro SD reader. HDMI cable. I get HDMI cables from my local Dollar Tree. It's a dollar store, and they sell six-foot HDMI cables for one dollar. The case is actually pretty cool. I was thinking about buying one. I did some research on it. I'm not going to buy one because you just saw in the video is the same exact thing. We're going to scroll down a little bit. Take a look at this. Okay, so we have our power in, SD card slot, HDMI, OTG USB. A little weird looking here. Over on the side, there's two USB ports. Wait a second. So what I'm trying to get at is this Retro Engine Sigma is an Orange Pie light inside of a case. They're selling it for $79 with a 32 gigabyte card. Retro Pi, pretty much, emulation station with RetroArch as your cores behind it. $79 for the 32 model. $129 for the 64 gigabyte model. Really, really crazy. Comes with a Bluetooth dongle. Those are about $3 on Banggood. So, 
That's what I'm trying to get at here. If you have ordered one of these, I don't blame you. It was a little bit of a trick. But coming out, they got each one of these, if they bought them in mass from Orange Pie, they probably paid like 4 to $7 per board. And they're selling everything for 79 bucks. Super cheap cable. It's going to be a very cheap power supply also. Now, the lure of the case looks pretty cool, but you can always get a case for anything. For a Raspberry Pi, they're all over the place. Orange pies, banana pies, um, whatever the pie you're using. There is a case out there for you. I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. So the Retro Engine Sigma is an Orange Pi Lite. They are $15.31 on Banggood right now, and you might be able to search online and find them for cheaper. I have seen this one for $9 before. This is the Orange Pi 1, only one USB, no Wi-Fi, but I'm not worried about that. I do have one of these coming. I thought they would have shipped them together, but obviously they didn't. Hopefully I get it tomorrow, possibly next week. I'll do a video on that also. It's going to be the same performance. We just have Wi-Fi and another USB. I really appreciate you watching. I just wanted to give you guys that heads up. So if you see this on your Facebook page, I mean, there's really no reason to buy the Retro Engine Sigma. The Pi 3 is going to have way better support. But for the price of these little orange pies, it's a cool little project to mess with. If you got 16 bucks to burn, you already got a controller for your Raspberry Pi and an SD card, why not get one of these? Like always, thanks for watching.